Sumorella by Sandy Takayama. Once upon a time on an island in the middle of the ocean, there lived a young boy, his mother and father, and his two older brothers. They lived in an old house in the middle of a huge yard surrounded by mango trees. Each morning, the, mother's, the boy's mother and father went off to a little corner market where they sold their mango specialities. People came from all over the island to buy their delicious mango bread, mango chutney, mango seed, and of course, pickled mango. And each afternoon, his two older brothers went off to sumo practice at the neighborhood park, and each day after school, the young boy was left to do all the chores. He picked the mangoes, peeled, sliced, and chopped them. He trimmed the tree branches, raked up the leaves, and threw away all the, ugh, rotten mangoes. Everyone called him Mango Boy. The day came for the local sumo exhibition. Rumor had it that a famous stable master from Japan was visiting the islands in hope of recruiting some local talent. The two older brothers were competing in the exhibition, but when the young boy begged to go with them, they just laughed. What? Mango boy? You like go with us? No way! You so shrimpy! The mawashi not even gonna stay on! Go against one, not a two, three hundred pound, all right? And they cracked up all the way to the park. Mango boy wished more than anything that he could compete in the exhibition. But how can I go? No more time. Always get so much work for do, he sighed as he sat down under the mango tree. Just then, Mango Boy's good friend, the Manapawa man, came strolling down the lane and called out, Hot Manapawa! Hot Manapawa! And when he reached the house, he lifted the bamboo pole off his shoulders and looked closely at Mango Boy. Eh, hey, you all right or what, boy? You look funny, kind of. Mango Boy shook his head. Nah, nothing. Just stinking. He looked around, and then he whispered to the Manapua man. No tell nobody, but I like being the sumo stuff today. You? You like be sumo tori? I know, I know. I stay small, but I pretty fast, you know. I practice my moves morning time before everybody get up. I just need more chance to prove myself, the Manapoa man shrugged. Sounds poo-poo-ly to me, but uh, go then, go then. I go do your work for you. What? Nah, I no can ask you for do them all by yourself. Hey, I stay old, but I can't handle this your chance. Better go for it. Mango boy didn't move. But I know more one mawashi, and I don't know how to make my hair nice kind way. No worry, no worry, he said, the Manapua man with a smile. Just bring me one pumpkin and some mice and a big old rat. Mingle Boy quickly gathered everything. The Manapua man took a bite of one of the Manapuas and waved it in the air. The next instant, Mingle Boy was standing next to a golden coach complete with horses and coachmen. He was dressed in a satin ball gown with the daintiest glass slippers on his feet. The Manapua man jumped back in surprise. Whoa, sorry boy. I when make you get the wrong things. Whew, let me think now. Sumatori, sumatori. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I gotta get, you gotta give me five bags of poi, two pots of rice and uh, 12 green bananas. I think that's it. Uh-oh. Mango boy took quite a while to gather up the items. It was difficult getting around in the ball gown and glass slippers. Finally, he placed everything in front of the Manapua man. The Manapua man looked over it and said, Okay, now you gotta eat them. What? yelled Mingo Boy. I gotta eat all that? Yeah, why? replied the Manapua man. What do you think? Sumatori just drink water all day? Mingo Boy smiled weakly and started to dig in. He managed to eat one and a half bags of poi, three cups of rice, and seven green bananas before collapsing to the ground with a huge burp. 
Again the Manipua man took a bite of the Manipua, waved in the air, and suddenly Mango Boy stood dressed in Mawashi made a most beautiful silk brocade. His hair gleamed in an elaborate top knot. The Manipua man walked around and looking at him. You stay a little bit more tall, but still way too skinny. No can help though. You never eat all that stuff, that's why. I don't care, said Mango Boy. Good enough, good enough. Thanks, eh? As Mango Boy turned to run to the exhibition, the Manipua man yelled, Oh yeah, I almost went and forgot. From now on, you Sumorella, not Mango Boy. And don't forget, come back by Kwa Kwa time or your Mawashi gonna fall right off your Okole. Sumorella made it just in time, and when he first took his place on the doyo, the crowd roared with laughter. But he has, as the exhibition went on, and he continued to beat each of his opponents, the laughter turned to cheers. Sumorella, Sumorella, they chanted. Soon it was time for the final match. Sumorella's stomach began to growl as he grappled with his opponent and he realized with alarm that it was almost Kwa Kwa time. With one last heave, he threw his opponent out of the doyo. His mawashi fell off, but he kept on running. He escaped through the nearest exit. When he reached home, he was himself again. Uh Uh-oh. Sumorella glanced around. All the chores were done. The Manapua man was just slipping the bamboo pole back onto his shoulders. Before Sumorella could say a word, the Manapua man flashed a shaka sign and disappeared down the lane. At dinner that night, his brothers could only exclaim about the skinny Sumatori who had won every match and then vanished mysteriously. The stable master was going from house to house looking for the Sumatori who could fit in it. Oops. When the stable master arrived, his brothers tried every trick they knew to squeeze into the mawashi. They grunted and groaned and pulled and tugged, but they could barely get a leg in it. The stable master was about to leave when he noticed Sumorella sitting around by the mango tree. He bowed politely and said, Gomen nasai, perhaps you like to try a mawashi too. Ah, no, bother with him, laughed the brothers. Unless you like him, wrestle one mango or something. But the stable master insisted. Sumarella climbed down from the tree. He tried on the mawashi, and to everyone's surprise, it fit perfectly. The stable master immediately invited Sumarella to come live in Japan and train at the finest sumo stable there. Sumarella worked hard and eventually reached the rank of Yokozuna. He became one of the most famous sumotori in Japan and was well-loved by people everywhere. When he retired from sumo, he returned home and married a former Miss Hawaii, and he later became a trustee of one of the wealthiest private estates on the island, and for the rest of his life, he never had to pick up a rotten mango again. The end.